Olive oil. Now use olive oil to keep it from boiling over. It'll do it too. I'm putting this fire under this yet because it didn't need it. Uh, we'll put fire under it, don't worry. Now we put a little water. See, the way I cook this is the way I cook my regular rice. Now if I had a pot this big and I'd fill it nearly full of rice, I wouldn't be able to measure the water until I had it in that pot. And that's the way it is with this too. I don't know, this is four cups of water, but I don't think it's gonna, it may take all of that, it may take a little more. Let's see. Yep, that's not gonna do it. Get out in there. My hands are clean, I washed them. Now what I'm doing, that's my, was my mother's lay the law down finger. <laughs> Your index finger to where you can touch the rice. And everybody, if they're normal, everybody's index finger first joint is the same length. Check with your neighbor then, see if I'm not telling you the truth. I think that'll be enough. It didn't even take the whole thing, just a little bit left over. And I stir. Now I stir. And I'm gonna check and see if it's doing right, which I think it will. Exactly right. Now, into this, I'm gonna put some olive oil, say like a couple of tablespoons full. That's to keep it, keep it from boiling over. It, it helps the flavor though, it helps the flavor. Here, let's go. That two tablespoons full, that's what it says. And I'll bet that two tablespoons full when I get through, there it is. Two tablespoons full of olive oil. Put that down right there where it belongs. Now don't stir that now, I'm gonna stir it in a few minutes, but right now, I'm gonna turn it on. And I'm gonna put it on a medium, put it high to start with, because I want it to cook fast. Then you'll see that uh, when I get it to where most all the water's gone, I'm gonna put this lid on it, and put it on simmer, and let it simmer, 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 see? And that's the way it works. In this part, I'm gonna make a seven steak, etouffee. Now, etouffee means smothered. When I get all of the stuff in there, all the, the stuff that has to be, I'll put that lid on it. It's got little rims there where I can smother it. Smother it down. Now, into this, I've got to put, i got to move this uh, wildlife recipe. I, I will look at my recipe because Anybody that's a creative cook can't remember the recipes. They got to have them where they see them, you know. And that, I'm a creative cook and love doing what I do. Now, into this, I'm gonna put two tablespoons, tablespoons full of olive oil, maybe a little more, maybe just a little more than two tablespoons full. No question about that. But I've got to put the seven steaks in here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That's about two tablespoons full. No, not nowadays, huh? <laughs> guarantee you that. Now, I'm going to turn the fire on. I got to put the fire on a medium heat, medium hot heat. Let's go here, fire. That's on medium. I want to get, first you put the, the seven steak that we got chopped up a little bit. Then I put all the rest of this stuff in there. And I'm gonna show you all something while I'm thinking about it. While that's hotting up, I've got some shiitake mushrooms that's gonna go in there. And I'm gonna take one of these and take this ulu knife and chop it up. To show you how ulu knife is used and also how easy they are to use. You know, I got to go all the way over here to this little bowl and chop this up. You see, nothing to it. You don't know, chop with this. I've seen the Indians in, in Alaska where I got this knife, skin a whole deer, or filet a fish. You see how easy that was? Nothing to it. And clean it off a little bit and put the Hulu knife back. 
because it's sharp. I guarantee you that for true. That's for true. It is sharp. Go down in there. Now you're cooking good. Now I can put that some of them seven steak in there and brown them all. And brown them all off. Come on here. Now we're going. You didn't think I knew that was hot, did you? Sure I did. Mm. Mm. That seven steak is a shoulder steak. Now this has had the bone taken out. The reason they call it a seven steak is it has a perfect seven, the bone makes. And it tastes good, and it's a good piece of meat. And very few people realize that what a good piece of meat it is. Now I know I've got to put all this in there, which I'm gonna do. Oh boy, that smells good. Oh. I'm putting that in there. I can't help but think of a, a Cajun story. But this is beef, beef meat. And uh, think about that, that Cajun, if a, if a policeman in, in Baton Rouge stopped, got to cut this fire down a little bit. Put it on medium, medium. He stopped him and he walked up to his car and you could smell it from here to 10 feet away. He said, uh, are you drunk? Oh, hell no, I'm not drunk, me. <laughs> he said, man, don't tell me, I can smell it. I don't care how you smell me. You see that fence over there? He said, yeah. He said, I guarantee I can jump that fence. He said, you can jump that fence? Oh, hell yeah, I can. He said, all right, get out of that car and jump that fence. He jumped out of that fence and there was a big bull in there. And that bull ran him down and really worked him over. He came back though and he jumped the fence back. And the policeman saw all that was going on in there. And he said, uh, you jumped the fence all right. What in the world happened in there? He said, some damn fool in a bicycle tried to run over me. I've <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got all this in there. I'm going to wipe my hand on my night loop that I carry there. That's handy to the pocket on the shirt. And I'm going to move this out of my way. Just put it right over here, out of my way. And put, I got a lot of stuff I got to put in there, but I got to stir that stuff. You see, it can't brown on there like that, but it can brown the way I do it. <laughs> that, that is for true. To get up off the bottom, Turn it over. Mm -mm. And I'll tell you right now, that is, that is good meat. I'm gonna eat some of it. I can tell you that's for true. Etouffee, I etouffee most everything. I etouffee crab meat, etouffee crawfish, etouffee all kind of stuff, you know, because it's easy to cook. And this is easy cooking. Boil that rice. Got to cut you down a little bit too. Now, that's gonna cook just right. It's gonna get right. You see, I'm gradually browning all that meat. Ha! Didn't think I could do it, but I can. Doesn't have to be cooked because it has to cook Oh, about three hours. It got to simmer for about three hours. Now into this, I'm gonna put a lot of good things, including shiitake mushrooms, but I just cut up one of those to show you what it was. And they, they to me, are the best mushrooms, and I love them. And I'm lucky I got a friend named Junior Monteleon that raises them for me and gives them to me. Boy, I'm glad to have a friend like that. Hmm. Those things are expensive. All right, let's turn it over there and brown a little bit. Now into this, into this A2 fave, I've got to put a lot of stuff, like I'm gonna put, that is four pounds of, 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 of meat in here, seven steak, and I got the salt to taste. I'm gonna put some salt in here right now. With this much meat, I've got to put two cups of onion, a cup of chopped bell pepper, two cup of chopped mushroom that I got chopped right there, 
I'm going to put this salt in here, though, and as I put this stuff over that, that's a teaspoon. And that's a teaspoon and a quarter. And this is about another half a teaspoon. <laughs> and it'll come out all right. Now I'm going to put two cup of chopped onion, and I'm going to stir this. Anytime you add anything, you've got to stir it. you always got to stir it. Anytime you add anything. Any good Cajun cook will tell you that. And I'm just telling you the truth, that's all. Mm, mm, mm. Now, bell pepper. About a half a cup of bell pepper. That's not a full cup, it's about a half a cup. That's what I'm gonna put in there right now. And I got to get it all. And I did. Mix it around and then stir. Oh, that onion just dropped on the floor. I'm gonna leave it down there though. I'm not gonna put it in here, I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh boy. Come on here now, let's get together. Ha. Get that down in. Now I'm gonna put into this two cup, two cup of shiitake mushrooms that I chopped up myself. I chopped them up. My hands are clean. I washed them yesterday. <laughs> and I stir some more. Mm-hmm. It's smelling better all the time. Now I got to put some more stuff in there though. I got olive, pimento stuff olive, and I got white wine. I see it. And I'm gonna put it in there right now. Now that's all the juice I'm gonna put in there. Put that in there. I got some celery powder. Here it is right here. I got the stir. I got the stir. Woo hoo hoo. Now this is gonna be so good. I don't believe I understood it. A two fair. I don't know what Cajun invented that, but he was smart. This is this is celery powder. We didn't chop any celery and put in there. We used the powder, and it's good. I like to use dried dried uh, vegetables. I really do. They're good, and they have the same flavor. If you do what it says so on the direction, what read on the box that you get it in, or if you dry it yourself, you teach yourself what what uh, when to put the water and all that stuff. Now into this, I got the mushroom, dry white wine. Now, stuffed pimento olive. Oh boy. Let's get the rest of that in there. Got it? And I'm gonna stir. Mm-hmm. Oh, a left of olive, I'll just eat that, two of them. <laughs> mm hmm that's good. Into this, I got to put some dried parsley. And this is dried parsley, not fresh parsley. It's one half a cup of dried parsley. And when it swells up, it'll be better than a cup. Stir it up just damn. That wild rice is acting just about right. Now, I've got here some dried mint. As I say, I cook with it rather than cook with the... Stir it up, get all that water on it. Mm-hmm. Garlic. Now, this is a tablespoon full of chopped garlic. Get every bit of it in there because garlic's good for you. Tastes good. Cause people to invent twin beds, I admit that, but it's awful good. I love it. Oh, you kid. That's looking better all the time. Now I got to put a little steak sauce in that. And a little Louisiana hot sauce. Shake it up. Got it. I got to put a tablespoonful, of, two tablespoonful of steak sauce. 
And I love good steak sauce. And this is good steak sauce. Oh, I, now just a, just a tablespoonful, John. Just a tablespoonful. All right, that's one tablespoonful. Two tablespoonfuls. <laughs> and a little bit more. That don't hurt a thing. And I got to put a little Louisiana hot sauce in that. It says two teaspoons, all right? I'll put two teaspoons. I don't even have to measure it. I know two teaspoons from the bottom, see? That's two teaspoons. Exactly. <laughs> two teaspoons. And I stir this. Sit down there like you know what you're doing. Stir it good, get everything stirred up good because we want all the seasoning to get mixed up into the whole thing. I'm gonna put a lid that's, that's tight and I'm gonna let that simmer. This is gonna simmer about three hours. Two to three hours. So three hours is just about what I'm talking about. So put that on there like that. Oh man. That tastes good, it smells, it's gonna be awful good. Let me just let y'all smell a little more of that one. <laughs> now I'm gonna put the lid on this, I've got everything in. I always like to check that. Hot sauce, steak sauce, dried mint, celery powder, dried parsley, chopped garlic, pimento stuffed olive, cup of dry white wine, one cup of bell pepper, two cup of mushroom, salt to taste, two cup of chopped onion, four pound of meat. Now let's just put this on. And we're going to lower this fire to a simmer, just a gentle little simmer. Where you at there? There you are, right here. And you know, they put it on that simmer, and it'll go good there, I guarantee you. Come on down, come on down, fire. That's what I like about gas cooking. You can see what you're doing with your heat. Got that. Now rice, I'm gonna have to stir you whether you want to be stirred or not, because you're getting close to the point where most of the water is going, but it's not quite gone. Doing good though, doing awful good. Now, I got a friend, Cajun, who was a zoologist in one of the universities. And he was in a zoology class one time, and he had a, a flea that he was working on. He got that flea with a microscope and all that stuff so he could see. He got that, looked through there, and he reached and got that flea with a little pair of tweezers, held it up, and pulled one leg off of that. Now what I got to do with that? He pulled one leg, then he looked at the, through that mic some more in that flea, reached and got him, put another leg, and put him down, and the flea jumped. He put him back under there, he pulled another leg off, take the flea out, put him down, and the flea jumped. Looked through that mic some more, reached and got that flea, pull off one more leg, put the flea down, pick him up, <coughs> and the flea jumped. He had one leg left. He reached in, got that one leg for that flea after picking him up, pulled it off, put it down. The flea didn't do anything. And he wrote in his report, he was writing all the time. He said, when you pull all the leg from a flea, he can't jump. <laughs> and that's true, he just can't jump. I got to put this on simmer, simmer, put the lid on it, put that right there. That's a heat diffuser, and I couldn't cook without it. I really couldn't. Diffuse that heat, got that done. Now, I've got to get me some of that uh, etouffee that I snuck up on people and prepared earlier. Mm-hmm. Get off of that. Yeah. Yeah, just, uh, just I don't want much. Just, uh, just a little steak or something like that, but I'm gonna put some of that juice on some wild rice. 
Oh, you kid. That looks good. That looks good. Get a little wild rice that I had cooked earlier. Put it right here. Mm-hmm. Put that lid back on there. Go sit myself down. Pour myself a little wine. And show you exactly how this tastes. I want you to know I guarantee it's got to be good. I got a little juice right here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let me get a piece of that etouffee meat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. I'm gonna taste this jambalaya first. Let's just go ahead on and cook. Get the part of the chicken that I like. Turtle stew, come here, boy. Mm. You know that looks good? This is going to be good, I guarantee. I talk to it like it knows what I'm talking about. I like it, it's good. I believe in easy cooking, believe me, I do. for you to see me, I guarantee. <laughs> and I've got some goodies for you here. I really do have. I'm gonna cook some eggs, and I'll talk about that when I get to doing it. But right now, I wanna start another dish. Right in there, I've got water. 16 cups of water in there. That's what's in there. I'm gonna put some cabbage. This makes about eight to 10 servings, depending on who's hungry. That's what we got. <laughs> and uh, then I'm gonna put two couples of Brussels, uh, we all call it Brussels, Brussels sprout, and four cups of one inch pieces of peeled sweet potatoes. I love sweet potatoes. <laughs> and 12 cups of one inch cubes of cabbage. She had cord there, but I scratch through that. I like that core too. Shucks, that's good. <laughs> One and a half cups of dry white wine, right there. Salt and cayenne pepper to taste. My taste. <laughs> Hope you all like it. And I put everything in there, but first of all, I'm gonna turn the fire on. That's the best thing to do, I think, if I remember which one. I did remember which one. I can't get over that. Put that on medium and get that water to hotten up. And into that, I'm gonna put the cabbage. My hands are clean, I washed them yesterday. <laughs> Might as well get this started. Now, I have a friend that doesn't like cabbage, but he loves Brussels, Brussels sprout. And he's the one that finishes my beautiful, shiitake mushrooms that I love to, to cook with because they have such a wonderful, distinct flavor and you don't recognize what it is unless you know what you're eating. I was on a TV show years ago in California and I got an omelet with shiitake mustard, uh, mushrooms in it. You know, that show when they had four, four of this, all these people on, in, you know, and I cook every show. You do all of them in one day, five different shows. And this smart aleck, MC said to me, do you know what shiitake is? I said, yes, sir. It's a wonderful mushroom. He got so mad, he didn't think I knew it from the country. <laughs> Getting this in there, and I'm gonna stir it. Don't wanna lose any of that, that's good stuff. Now I'll stir that up. Mm-hmm. Let's get to cooking. I'm gonna put that on high so I'll get it going. It's the best thing to do, put it on high, and there it is. Now I'm gonna put this, I could eat that just like it is. I like them raw, baked, boiled, any way you wanna cook them. I like them in cabbage. 
and make cabbage taste good. The people who don't like cabbage, they eat it anyhow. <laughs> the sweet potatoes make them taste good. Put that in there like that. And I'm going to stir it as soon as I get it all in there. Let's go, girls, and go like it. Stir. Yeah. Put all that together. Now the Bruce L. Sprout, they got to go in there. Ain't nothing to worry with a little bit of cabbage that didn't grow up. That's all it is. <laughs> Stir it, man. Now you're going to put the seasoning to it and get it going good. Oh, boy. Get to cooking there now, let's get to cooking. Into this now, I got to put some dry white wine. Mmm. Oh boy. <laughs> Cup and a half. And 16 cups of water, that's a good ratio for every soil. Salt. Believe it or not, look at that red pepper trying to get on me and it'll make me sneeze. Salt. Let's see, I got uh, quite a few cabbage, and I got some Brussels sprout. There's no meat in this, you know. This is a vegetarian, and that's, that's a teaspoonful of salt, whether you know it or not. And people don't believe me, so I'll just measure this in a spoon to show you I know what I'm talking about. There's a spoon, teaspoon, that is, and I bet that's a teaspoon. Get you a I put two in there, and I'm going to put three. It wasn't quite a teaspoon, so it worked all right just like that. Now, I got to stir. And I got to put cayenne pepper in there to taste my taste. And I don't like too much pepper. Contrary to what people try to make other people believe that Cajun people like real hot food, that's not true. They like food that is really well seasoned and that's all. They don't want it too hot, they don't want it too cold. Now I, I could put all of this in there and some people would eat it. I couldn't. I don't want to try. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Let's get to shaking there. Let's get to shaking, baby. Now, now actually, I'm not getting much out of that. And if I want chill, I would uh, take the top off and chunk some of it. But that's enough in there right now, and we're gonna let this cook. Get the boiling, baby. If you don't boil, you ain't gonna cook. That I know. I'll have to put the lid on that and look at it every now and then to be sure it's cooking just right. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm going to scramble some eggs with shiitake mushroom and onion in it. And if I'd put rice in it, it would be an egg jambalaya. That's one, one, one of the things it would, do, it would be. Now, here, here, got that. Now I got to put, I got to move this recipe and be sure I'm looking at the other one. I got all the other ingredients. I got the Brussels sprout, the cabbage, the uh, sweet potatoes, dry white wine. I didn't forget that, it never do. <laughs> and now I got the egg and mushroom and onion. That's what this is. The first thing I got to do is turn my fire on with, uh, with olive oil. Uh, it says, this recipe says two tablespoons. I may put a little bit more than that because I'm gonna use more than, than the eggs that call for this recipe because I want everybody to get a little taste of it. It's very good. Uh, two teaspoons, two tablespoons. I'm gonna do it. I'll, I'll try it. It's just about two tablespoons. Yep. <laughs> now I got to get that fire going underneath that, so it'll it'll cook up a storm. Come on here, boy. 
wrong one. I'm just digging that with the wrong one. And no, it didn't act right. Put that on medium, and it'll hot up real fast. Get the oil run around to be sure I got oil all on the bottom. Now I got to whip those eggs, just whip the daylights out of them while that's heating up a little bit. There's seven eggs in here, large egg. And what we're going to do, we're going to scramble them. And as I say, if we'd have put rice in it, make an egg jump a lot. That's good too. I, I love it. I like a bigger bowl than this one. I'm going to beat these things because I beat hell out of them. <laughs> All right, egg, let's do an act point. Let's get beaten together. Mm. It says salt and garlic powder. And I'm going to put the garlic powder in here. Just a little, not much. Uh, like a, oh, let's see. I don't think I'll put much garlic powder in here. Just, just a half a teaspoon. Now, garlic powder. You stay right there. I don't want you to come falling out of there like that. I can measure half a teaspoon without getting in any trouble with this. I knew that was going to fall. Half a teaspoon. And I got to put some little hot sauce in there. Whether you all like it or not, that's going to go in it. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Get that garlic powder beaten to these eggs real good. Now, if I could just get you to stay there like you're supposed to, everything would be all right, and I think I can do it. Watch. I'll see what you slipping on. Huh. I got to put these onion in here and cook them till they're clear. Clear onions are usually done onions. And then I'll put a little of these beautiful shiitake mushrooms, which to me are the best mushrooms to eat. And a friend of mine raised these and sent them to me. Isn't that wonderful? They use right now. They're expensive. A lot of stores that may not have them, but a great many stores do have. They've got to cook. They've got to cook a little while. When I'm cooking these, I can't help but think about a little story I want to tell you about a little boy, Cajun boy, Nice family, good church members, went to church every Sunday and all that. But when he was just a little fella, oh, I guess about the six or five year old, they'd take him out to dinner every now and then, and he was, but they never would let him order. So we went out one night, and he said, Papa, please let me order, please let me order. Well, he said, son, you've be so, been so good, we're going to let you order. He said, go ahead and order. The witch said, what do you want, little, little mister? He said, I want some eggs. How would you like your eggs? He said, on the rock. <laughs> Boy. Come on here now. I love to cook, I love to eat, and I bet I've lost 185,000 pounds in my lifetime, too. <laughs> and now I'm keeping my weight right pretty good. Just varies five pounds in a day every now and then. And I'm glad it does that. And I'm gonna lower this fire when I get the onion the way they're clapped. Because when I put the egg on that, I don't want them to cook too fast, but I want them to cook good. I love scrambled eggs. There ain't no two ways about that. Love them. 
a little eggs in it with hard boiled. One day I cooked eggs 39 different ways in the uh, muffin tin. Had a uh, little gin in one, some, uh, some wine in one, some creme de menthe in one. Oh, they, they tasted good, too. Brandy in one. Come on now, mushrooms, and cook good. You doing good. Yes, sir. Now, but the Lord has fire a little bit because I think it's a little, ah, yeah. That smell good? Oh, yeah. Come on, on y'all, cook a little bit better than that. You can do better than that cooking, I know. I can tell. You know, um, when I was about eight years old, my mama, bless her wonderful heart, and God rest her soul, taught me to cook. We lived on a farm, and one day, mama said to papa, boy, I said, to Harry, I need someone to help me in the kitchen. I said, mama, I'll help, I'll help, I'll help. I hate his words in that field, any of you mine. She said, all right, come on in there, and you can help me. And without realizing it, I was getting an education without, uh, worried about being educated, you know? She was the most creative cook I've ever known. And I inherited her creativity. I'm very proud of her. And Papa said, I want you to work in the field. I said, can't you see I'm helping Mama? Huh? She said, what you doing? I said, whatever she tells me to do, I do. And I did, see? <laughs> but that's how all my cooking started. I, and, and I'm so glad it started like that. I didn't have to go to school for it. I had the greatest teacher in the world and didn't know I was going to school. Still hate school. So, <laughs> so I mean, these onions are just about clear, and I'm fixing to scramble some eggs, and I'm going to eat some of them too. I want you to know. You know get that lady told me, don't beat those pots. I said, I got to, lady. <laughs> and I do it now. Come here, eggs. That you and I get with the program. Oh, let's see, I got to put salt in the meat. That's what I got to do. Just a, a little salt. I didn't put it in there, I know that. Got to put a little, oh, let me move it over there like Salt, this thing don't say salt. Yeah, do salt to taste. Here I go. That seven egg, that'll take three quarters of a teaspoon full of salt. And maybe a little more. Just a little more, not as much, no. Put that over there out of the way. And put that salt in there good. And I like a little Louisiana hot sauce in mine. And I happen to have some handy right here. And if I can get this damn whisk to hold still, I'm gonna put some in there. Hold it there. Well, no, I'll put you over here. You won't hold still anywhere, you know it. That shook it good. Here, let's go. Just a little. And that's less than a half a teaspoon, folks. Now, this is not real hot stuff. It's made with cayenne pepper, which is good for you. And I'm going to just whip this a little bit and just scramble the hell out of these eggs right now. Here I come ready or not, eggs. Go any way you want to. Here I go. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be good. That's your last dollar on that. Gonna be real good, in fact, and I'm gonna eat some of this too. Oh man, egg, just go ahead and cook just right. That's on a low fire. I'm going to have to raise it just at least a little bit because I'm not satisfied with the way it's cooking. Oh, no, I'm doing it. Cook up there. You know, I love chicken. And I love eggs. I love food. 
no question about that. Man, do I love food. Boy, I'll tell you one thing. Come on, egg, you're doing pretty good. Let's get to going. Get to get fried. I like my egg. My, I, don't like, I don't like my scrambled eggs runny, you know. Ooh, I, I like them kind of firm, which these will be. A small spatula is good. You don't want a great big one that gets in the way. My eggs, you're doing good, but I want you to kind of hurry. And they're doing that for me. Mm -hmm. Get those sides right. Oh, now you're going. Just really get with it. A little more fire, that'll hurry him. <laughs> hurry anybody or anything. <laughs> yeah. I got to watch these eggs. I don't want them to, to burn on me, no. Have to start all over. That would be bad, yeah, like making a roux. You burn your roux, you start all over. Now you're going in. Getting better all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Getting off the bottom there because the bottom cooks quicker than the top. That I know. Anybody knows that, I think. I found that out a long time ago, the hard way. Oh, man. That smells good, too. All right, Abe. Now you're getting nearly to the point where I'm going to turn the fire off. Nearly to the point. And I'm going to sit down and eat some eggs and some cabbage with sweet tater in them. You dog going right. Now that's cooked enough. I'll put you on this platter like I'm supposed to, eh? If you'll cooperate with me, then I guess you will. You gotta admit that's pretty. Mushroom, shiitake mushroom, onion, I love onion too. I make onion sandwich every now and then. <laughs> and I know I'm not going anywhere, I won't have to breathe on anybody. <laughs> I sure do. Come out of there, come out of there, come on. Now, now I'm just gonna take, I'm just gonna take me a little bit of that for me. Mm-hmm. Just a little egg. I like egg, like I told you. I don't want to take that much, though. So just want to take a little. Like that much. Maybe I might just well take what I have. It looks good. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to get me some cabbage that I cooked earlier to be sure I had it here now. And I got to check that cabbage right there, too. I can tell. Cabbage and sweet potato and Don't that look good? Yeah. It is good. So let me turn this fire down a little bit over here while I'm thinking about it. Yes, sir. -y. Got to put that on simmer rimmel. Oh, well, now I got it. Just exactly right. Now go sit down as you stand and taste this and tell the people how good it is. Huh? <laughs> I'll be glad they did that, I guarantee. <laughs> Woo, come here to me. Without a napkin, here's a napkin. All right, sit yourself down. Pour yourself just a little bit of wine. <laughs> now, red wine goes with anything. Is it, uh, that's, that's part shaking his egg, but I like red wine, I like a Merlot or a Pinot Noir. That sounds like I know a lot about wine. I just know the wine I like, that's all. And this is a Merlot right here. And I'll pour just a sliver or two of that in there to be sure I got enough to wash the egg. That's enough, that's enough, all right? Thank you. Now I got this. 
and I'm going to taste this and let you know how good it is just as soon as I can. Mm-hmm. I guarantee that's good. Oh, boy. Do I guarantee it? Come here, get a little closer. Got my napkin on. Uh huh. Mm, mm, mm. Now, I got to try that cabbage. Now, that is delicious cabbage with sweet potato in it. I'll tell you for truth. Let me taste the sweet potato to see how it does. And that is good. It's got a little cabbage flavor, a little uh, Bruce Hill sprout flavor. But I'm going to have to go back to the egg and see how they're doing. Mm, 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 mm. I'll tell you right now, I ain't no king. But this is fit for one, I'll tell you that, anytime. <laughs> Mm, mm, mm. A Bruce L. Sprout. I'm going to split you in half. Gotcha. Ah, that's hot with fire. Oh, boy. Now, that don't taste like cabbage. It tastes like Brussels sprout. You know that? <laughs>
I'm going to put a little more water in there than I have. I'm going to put this in there. Not all of it. Yeah, I am. <laughs> now, into this, I'm going to put a 12-ounce bottle of non-alcoholic beer. Beer. This is just in case people don't want to drink alcohol. And it helps the taste of this. This is a 12-ounce bottle of non-alcoholic type of beer. I don't drink it, I want you to know. I'm not planning on starting either. Put that there like that. And I've got to put some salt in here. And then I'm going to let, let it cook. Stir it every now and then so it don't stick to the bottom. That smells good already. Where the salt is here. Come here, salt. Into this, I'm going to put two teaspoons of salt. That's a little over a teaspoon. <laughs> now I'm going to put a teaspoon and measure it in my hand and show you that I know what I'm doing about this. That's a teaspoon full of salt. Come here, you. See that? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Nothing to it, like eating lettuce, you know. <laughs> but that's practice. That's what that is. Tell you right now, hay fever will make you sneeze and your nose will run and all that. Now, we're going to put a fire under that. Fire's under it. We're going to put that on a medium low and bring it to a boil and let it cook like that. Now, I want to tell you all a story that actually happened down in Tibido, Louisiana, many years ago. There was a lady who was happily married, and her husband passed away and left her with a people lady. And she was just didn't know what to do with herself. She cried and all that stuff. Somebody said, you should get you a pet. I don't have any pets, I don't want to. Yeah, you'll get you a cat, and you'll love that cat, and that cat'll love you. And you've got something to look forward to, taking care of your pet. He said, all right, I'll get me a pet. So she got her beautiful cat, one of them, oh, who had long for a Persian cat or something like that. I don't know what they are, but I don't know much about cats. But she took care of that pet and enjoyed that cat and enjoyed doing it. And she overfed the cat, and the damn cat died. <laughs> she said, I'm in, a, I'm in a terrible fix, I'll tell you the truth, a terrible fix. But I can weather this, I've weathered other things, and I can weather this too, but I'm gonna go. And she went to the Catholic Church and said, we would like for you to bury my cat. The priest said, lady, we don't bury cats, we bury just people. That's all we bury. Well, I'm sorry. She says, I'll go ask one of the Protestant churches to bury my cat and, and give them that $25,000 I was going to give. He said, you said 25000 She says, yeah, well, you just brought your cat here. We just started burying cats, I guarantee. <laughs> And right now, I'm going to start putting something together. This, here. this is boiled macaroni that I boiled this morning, elbow macaroni. And into this clean, is that clean? Yes, it is. <laughs> and I'm going to put this in there, all of it. Get in there, get in there, get in there. My hands are clean, just washed them. Yes, did it. And I'm going to stir that with this spoon that's got holes in it. Get it around where we can really get with it, which we can do. Come up on the stove right there. Now, go on. Hmm. Come on, break loose. I know you're done because I ate part of it. Yes, sir. Now, into this, we've got various things we're going to put in that. Got a list of them, in fact. And I like to read my recipe to the people because I think they want to learn. Put that there. Put this in here. 
Give me a little more room. Yeah, that's what I need is room. I've got a pound of elbow macaroni cooked just like they said on the back of the package. That's what it says to do. I got a cup of nice onion. This is a cup of nice onion. I'm going to put this in there. And stir it just a little bit. We can do that now. You've got to mix this stuff as you go along. If you don't, you'll have all of the good stuff in one spot and the bad spot in another spot. That's it. And into this, I'm going to put a cup of, of finely, no, oh, a cup of dill pickles, chopped, not too fine. You want them to be in there so you taste the dill pickle. Put them dill pickle in there. Come on out of there now. I need every one of you. Stir a little bit. Then we're going to haul off there and put in there uh, some green onion. There they are, a cup of them. I've got a cup of green onion. Chunk them in there. And stir them around a little bit so it's mixed up a little. Get back in there now. Stir. Ah, yeah. Now into this, we're going to haul off and put a cup of finely chopped sari. I like sari, but I don't cook with much. Put that in there. Stir it around a little bit so it makes it easier. Then we're going to put some finely chopped parsley, stems and all, stems and the leaves. Put it in there like that. Got it all. Stir that in there some, right? That looks good. Yeah. Oh, man. I love this kind of salad. I really do. Because it tastes good. When it tastes good. That's the mainest thing. Mm-hmm. Now into that, I'm going to haul off and put pimento stuffed olives. Come here to me, a cup of them. What we did, we just slice them down the middle so we got the color and the flavor. Got it all. Ain't that nice? Don't you fall out of there. Now that's about most we're going to put in there. Oh, I got some hard-boiled eggs that's been chopped. Bell pepper. I'm going to put that in there before I put the egg and stir that in with, with them olives, pimento stuffed olives. I see you in there. Fresh bell pepper chopped. It is like this and like this. Mm, mm, mm. I guarantee that's going to be. Now I got these eggs, I got to put it. Oh, let me put that cheddar cheese first. That's pretty, huh? Right? Some grated cheddar cheese. Spread around there real nice. Then I'm going to put the egg on that and stir them both together at the same time. Eat, that's. Ooh, eat, that smells good. <laughs> Chopped egg. It took five eggs to get this thing right. That's a, about a, two cup of eggs, I think it is. Get that over there out of my way and stir this just a little to get it mixed up. You have to put that, cook that uh, macaroni and then let it cool down because if you didn't, you'd have the worst looking salad you ever saw. Everything would be floppy and this ain't floppy though. Ain't gonna be no. Now, I think I got everything in there I got to put in there. And what I'm gonna do is make a I'll just bring the mixing bowl over here. Oh, we that smell good. I got to stir that. I hate to do it, but I got to stir it. I don't hate it. It's trying to stick on me. All right, you chilly devil, don't you do that to me. If I may be a little hot, I think I'll put it on low. That's what I'm going to do. Put it on low. Now, it'll go ahead and cook anyhow, but it won't stick. 
Now into this salad dressing, I'm going to put some mayonnaise, a cup of mayonnaise, right here. I'm going to put it in this, in this bowl to just beat out of it. <laughs> Thought to say hell, but it didn't do it. Beat the hell out of this and good. Got to get all that in there and get, because I need it. And then I'm going to put some Creole moutard, mustard in that, and beat it the way it comes back to the consistency that that is right there. More on that now. I've got to put that, and I've got a fourth of a cup of Creole mustard, and it goes awfully good in this salad dress. It makes it look good, too. Got specks in it, make you think you got more than you got. Oh boy. Now, what I want to do is beat that together. I like this so it'll be good. <laughs> and put the motion on it, it ain't going to be any good if you don't. You see, it comes back to the same consistency that I wanted. I started with that mayonnaise. Now, into this, I'm going to put some olive oil. It says hot sauce, but I'm going to put the olive oil first. Because I'm going to beat that some more, make it look more pretty. I'll tell you for true, it's going to be good. I can't wait to taste some of this. Now, I think it said two tablespoons full. I'm a, yeah, that's what it said, two tablespoons full. I'm going to put one tablespoon full in there first. Then I'm going to beat a little bit. That's, that's a tablespoon full, don't worry. I'm, I can tell by weight if for nothing else. That tablespoon full of good olive oil. 